Google's Notebook LM just dropped five brand new features that make this tool 10 times more useful. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly what those features are, how you could use them, and I'm gonna share with you several different crazy use cases that are now possible. Notebook LM feature number one is that now, when you come in and try to generate an audio overview and click on this little pencil icon right here, you'll be able to choose between several different formats. For example, you could do a deep dive, which is going to create a lively conversation between two hosts unpacking and connecting topics in your sources. This is pretty much like what the normal audio overview used to be. The next one that they have is brief. This is going to be a bite-sized overview to help you grasp the core ideas from your resources quickly. This is going to be basically a really short version of an audio overview. Now, something that I did want to note here, if we click on deep type right here, you could see that we could change to make it short, make it default, make it longer. But if we change this to brief, that setting right there goes away. And the reason for this is because it's just going to create one that is short. The next one is going to be a critique. So basically, this is an expert reviewing of your sources, offering you constructive feedback to help you improve your material. Let's say that you have a YouTube video, or maybe you have a blog post or a PDF, or you're trying to make an argument for class. Doesn't matter what the use case is. This right here is going to allow you to get a review of your stuff. So you could use this for homework, you could use this for school, you could use this for a work PowerPoint or presentation. It's incredibly useful and it's pretty crazy how good it is at critiquing your stuff without insulting you like some people would do. And then in addition to that, we have debate right here, which is going to be a thoughtful debate between two different hosts, illuminating different perspectives on your sources. Now, for deep dive, we get three different lengths right here. For brief, there's no length. And for critique and debate, you're going to see that it's both shorter and default. If you want it to be longer, I would make sure that you keep this on default. In addition to that, you're now going to see this right here, which allows you to say what you want the host to actually focus on inside of the episode. I would make this prompt as specific as possible in order to actually go through and determine what is going to be said inside of this audio overview or podcast. Now you could use this for several different things. You could use this to create podcasts. You could use this to get feedback. You could even use this to debate two points that you've been struggling with in your head. Maybe you don't know if this is true or if that is true. You could get this to debate it out, listen to it, and then you'll be able to actually say, you know what? I think I believe in this side. Now, in addition to this, the other new feature that they just dropped is there are more than 80 different languages that you could generate these for now, which is crazy because if you wanted to, you could make a bunch of different podcasts in different languages. For example, maybe you do an English one and you do a Spanish one and you do a Filipino one, or maybe you do one in French or one in Italian, there are now tons of different languages that you are going to be able to generate these audio overviews in. And all you have to do now is literally just come over here, click on this, choose the length, choose what you want them to focus on, click on generate, and then this is going to go through and generate this. And as you can see right here, it only takes a few minutes for this to go through and actually create one of these overviews. And if you wanted to, you could have it come through and create all of these if you really want it. You'll see that these all then get created and it'll be specific about which one you chose once it's actually done. In addition to that, if you come over here to the left-hand side, you're gonna be able to now discover additional sources from the web or from your Google Drive. You could click on I'm feeling curious, which is just going to get random sources, or if you wanted to, click on add right here, and you could add sources up to 300 on any of these different file types. In addition to that, let's say that you don't want all the sources to be used when you're generating an audio overview. Just select the ones that you want to be used and then come over here and click on this and it will only use those and not your entire source catalog. Okay, so now these audio overviews are done and we can actually see them right here. And again, I wanted to note here that this says deep dive, this says critique, so you can very easily figure out which format you actually chose and what's being used right here. In addition to that, you'll see that we can enable interactive mode or we could just play it or we could come over here and rename it, download it, or share it if we wanted to. Now I'm gonna open up interactive mode right here to show this off to you, but essentially what this is going to do is begin to play this podcast and we could actually join it if we wanted to interrupt the hosts and ask them a question about something. And again, I find this really cool if you do this with YouTube videos or do this with podcasts or things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to interact with. 
Check this out. Welcome back to the deep dive. Today we're embarking on a, well, a really fascinating journey. We're looking into how we manage, how we understand, and maybe how we build trust in complex systems. Right, systems like. Cool, so as we can see, there were two hosts there. And again, if I wanted to interrupt them at any time, I'd literally just click on join right here, which is only gonna be enabled when they're actually talking. And then I could go through, could interrupt what they're saying, could jump into the conversation, ask some questions, ask for more context, ask for use cases or anything like that. And it will go back through the sources and answer my question. Now, before I get into the three other changes that are only gonna keep getting crazier and crazier, I need to make sure that you smash that subscribe button if you wanna learn how to use AI to automate your work or how to use AI to make more money in 2025. I upload videos like this every single day and you're not gonna wanna miss them. Now, feature number three is the ability to now customize video overviews over here. So if you wanted to create a video overview of your sources, you would just come over here, you would click on this, and you're now going to see that this also has over 80 different languages that you will be able to create this for. In addition to that, you can also choose what the AI host is going to focus on. In the past, you didn't have this type of customization right here, but now you do, which is incredibly helpful because you could use this to create YouTube videos, to create online onboarding videos, to create intro videos, sales pitch videos. The opportunities here are endless because this creates some pretty cool stuff. And again, in order to actually create this, it's incredibly easy. So let's come over here and let's actually start up a new notebook and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. So let's say that we wanted to learn about something, for example, learning about voice agents. What I'm gonna do is type in voice agents right here. Now, this is going to go through and this is going to find me a bunch of different sources for content about voice agents. So we could see all these right here. I like all of these. I'm going to come over here and I am going to import all of these into here. Now, from here, what we're going to do is create a video overview. And this is essentially going to make us a custom YouTube video from all these sources about voice agents and everything that we could possibly learn about them. So I'm going to come over here and I want this to focus on how to create and train voice agents. And then we're going to click on generate right here. Now this is going to go through and this is going to generate a video for us on creating voice agents from all these different sources because I didn't find the video that I actually wanted to watch and I didn't think any of them were that good on this topic. So I'm going to use Notebook LM to create my own. Okay, so now that this video is actually done here, let's come over here and check this out. You'll see that again, we can rename it, we could download it, we could share it, or we could delete it if we wanted to. If we click on play right here, we'll be able to play this. All right, let's get right into it. Today, we're going to walk through how you can actually build and train your very first voice agent. And we're talking about one that sounds so incredibly human. So cool. We could see that this now goes through and this is going to walk us through how to actually build a voice agent. And as we could see, this actually built out its own graphics so we could see how they work and actually the process here. And this is going to go through, take all these information from these sources It probably would have take me, I don't know, an hour, half an hour in order for me to go through all these, but it made it incredibly easy for me to just be able to interact with this video and I could share it with my team. I could upload it somewhere or just use it for my own good because now this is incredibly useful. A new feature number four is going to be if we click on reports right here, we're going to be able to generate several different things now. We can now create a briefing doc. We can create a study guide. We can create an FAQ and we can create a timeline right here. And I find these incredibly poor if you're trying to do something for work or for school. For example, let's say that you had a bunch of sources and you wanted to create some type of briefing or onboarding. You would be able to use a briefing doc for that. Or maybe you have a bunch of sources for your class and you just uploaded everything that you learned and all the PowerPoints and all the stuff. Well, now you have a study guide for that. Or maybe you wanted to make an FAQ for your website or maybe an FAQ for your team on something you're training them on. Again, FAQ is incredibly reasonable for that. And then this timeline feature right here is incredibly useful if you're doing something that is historical or I really like to use this feature right here for YouTube videos because it goes through and actually builds out a timeline of them. In addition to that, you also have mind map right here. This isn't new, but Notebook LM is pretty awesome for building out mind maps of YouTube content, PDFs, PowerPoints, it doesn't matter what it is, and it makes it really easy for you to be able to see a bunch of information all 
from one place. And then that last feature that Notebook LM has finally gotten is if we come over to share over here, you're now gonna be able to share this the same way that you could share anything else. For example, I'm always sharing things on Google Drive. I'm always sharing Google Sheets, Google Docs, PowerPoints. Now you could do that with notebooks. So you literally just come over here and if you wanted to, you could add in a welcome note for when users actually open up the notebook. For example, you could have it be, hey, I wanted you to check this out for whatever reason. And then if you come down here, you could see the type of things that you could do. For example, you could give it chat access only. Let's say if you had students or you had somebody that you wanted to learn from sources, you could do that or you could do full notebook right here. And then outside of that, when you come over here, you're now going to have analytics. This this is going to give you analytics so you could see how people are actually interacting with Notebook OM, but please note it needs to be shared with at least four other users and there needs to be chat history in the last seven days for you to be able to view these analytics right here. Not sure if you've seen the reports yet, but Goldman Sachs just came out and said that they think in the next 12 months, AI is going to replace over 300 million jobs. So my question for you is, are you going to be one of those people that's replacing those jobs? Or are you going to be one of the people that gets replaced because you didn't embrace AI? And that's exactly why I created AI Automation School that you could check out at the pinned comment below. In fact, I have special launch pricing right now. So if you want to stay ahead of what's happening in AI and you want to learn how to automate your work with AI, how to make more money with AI, how to build AI agents without knowing how to code, or you just want me to audit your personal AI workflow so we could speed things up for you, I strongly suggest that you check it out. Now, if you like this video, I strongly suggest you check out this video right here that walks you through a brand new tool that allows you to begin to automate your work and you could get started with it today for free. That sound interesting? I'll see you over there.